Hello, good morning. How's everybody doing today? This is Rich Harshaw from Monopolize Your Marketplace. We will be starting this webinar in approximately one minute. Today to talk about pay-per-click. And before we get going, <clears throat> I'm going to address the biggest concern that people might have on a webinar that we're doing today, which is, hey, it looks like, based on what I read, that you're just trying to sell me something. And the answer is, yes. Yes, I am. The reason is, as you've seen in some of the promotional materials, as we'll go through here, we figured this thing out so that it actually works. And to not make this available to you is a disservice to you, okay? I put out a letter. I'm sure you read it. You uh, probably registered for this webinar as a result of that letter that quite candidly admitted that pay-per-click advertising is something that we haven't always been that great at doing over here at MYM. In fact, I think the word that I used is we kind of suck at it. <clears throat> and the reason is we're going to cover here as we go through uh, as we go through this webinar today. But here's what I want you to know. Again, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. <clears throat> it's kind of an awkward situation because I've covered some of this on a letter that I know you've read, and I'm going to cover it uh, here on this webinar. I'm going to go into a lot more detail than the letter went into as I go through this webinar. But here's what I want you to know. This presentation today, what we're about to talk about, what I want to share with you <clears throat> is the result of a lot of effort into fixing a problem, not just within our company, not just something that we didn't used to be good at, but an industry-wide problem when I go to seminars and I say, by show of hands, who's currently involved in pay-per-click advertising, the percentage of hands that goes up is usually somewhere from about 20 to 30 percent, which means that there's about 70 to 80 percent that don't raise their hands, which means they're not currently involved. And the reasons are almost always the same, which is it just hasn't worked for me. In fact, uh, I'm going to launch a poll. I'd like to see what you have to say about this. Let me go over here to my handy poll questions and We'll ask this as we kind of get started and rolling in this. Uh, I'm going to launch a poll that says, what is your past experience with pay-per-click? Go ahead and fill that out. I'll give you just a, a few seconds. I'd be real curious to see what this group, uh, many of you are our past or current customers, uh, not everybody on this call, call but uh, the majority. So let's see what, uh, what you have to say. I'll give you about 10 more seconds. So we get to a certain threshold of voting. Let's get, uh, okay, we reached the threshold. I'll still give you five more seconds, four, three. Oh, geez, you guys are good voters. I guess when you do the polls early in the webinar, you get lots of participation. All right, let's see if we, oh, okay, wow. All right, let's give you three, two, one, and close the poll. So uh, here's what I came up with uh, for the poll results. 41% of you say that you've never tried it before. Okay, that's pretty consistent with what I was just saying. Another 18% said tried it and we could never get it to work. 18% said have had some success with it. It's not working right now. And 24% said using it with great or good success. Now, funny thing, that's exactly the ratio that I said that I see in the webinars, excuse me, the seminars that we do all over the country, about 20 to 30 percent, in this case 24 percent, said that you're using it with good or great success. Hopefully a couple of you who uh, check that box are ones that are currently using with MYM and having good or great success. But uh, that's why we're having this webinar. I want to crack this code. Now, this webinar actually has two parts. We're going to go probably right around an hour or so, maybe a little bit longer. At the end, I'm going to give you a chance to type in some questions and ask through the uh, console that you have there on your screen. But we're going to have two parts. The first part is going to be about 80% of the time that we're going to spend. It is going to be about pay-per-click. I do want to then transition for about 20% just at the last end of this webinar. We're going to talk about um, uh, financing, which I called in one of the other letters I wrote to you, secret weapon. And I really believe that. It's something that I really want you to understand and just get a little bit different perspective on it than maybe you've had in the past. So we'll spend a little bit of time don't, don't think that because we're only spending a little bit of time that it's only a little bit important. It just doesn't take as long to explain, okay? So let's get rolling here. I'm going to do a quick technical check and make sure that the, uh, the technology is working. So let's go. All right, come on. 
Okay, yeah, we're working now. Let's talk about internet marketing. Now, some of the stuff you're going to say, I've heard you talk about this before, Rich. Priority number one for internet marketing, identity-based websites, turn those lookers into buyers. I am not going to spend any time, surprisingly, talking about that. Well, maybe just a teeny tiny bit, but not the normal amount. I love to talk about this topic. It's my favorite thing, talking about identity-based websites. The majority of you know what that is. You've been on webinars with me before. A lot of you are our current customers. You have those websites, and hopefully you're loving those. Just hearing lots of good feedback about that. But what I want to really talk about is priority two, and I've broken it into two, priority 2A and 2B. Search engine optimization, obviously you want your company to come up on the first page when people search for relevant terms. You have to start now. We could have a whole other webinar on search engine optimization. We've also cracked the code and fixed that, and man, we're getting phenomenal results with that. It's really, really awesome. I'm very, very excited about that, but we just don't have time to talk about both of those things today. So we'll have another webinar sometime, I don't know, maybe December or something like that, and we'll talk about SEO. But today we're going to talk about priority 2B, which is pay-per-click advertising. I think the reason we're going to talk about this first is it is the fastest way to show up in search. In other words, we can start you today, and you can be showing up in search tomorrow. Yeah, it might be start tomorrow and then show up the next day. I mean, there's a little bit of setup time, but not very much, okay? You can buy as many leads as you're willing to pay for. Let me ask you this. If the leads that you were getting for pay-per-click were quality leads, and I know that's a concern, and we'll cover that a little bit later on, but if the leads were quality, in other words, it was really actually a person that actually wanted to buy what you sell, they gave you their name and their phone number, and they were ready to talk to you, if you could buy quality leads from pay-per-click for somewhere in the range of $100 to $200, here's the question, how many would you want? Back up the truck, we'll dump them in as many as you can stand. The only limitation is some areas where you may be in a little bit smaller area geographically, there may not be as many leads available simply because there's just not as many people. But I'm telling you, in most of the areas where most of our clients are, I don't want to say it's unlimited, but dadgummit, it's more than you've been believing that you could spend. In other words, if you're getting a $100 lead and you spend $10,000, you get 100 leads. What could you do with 100 leads or half that? What if you had 50 leads? What could you do with that? And the answer is you could do some amazing things. We'll talk about that. So just to kind of set the stage for what we're talking about here, pay-per-click advertising, what we're talking about is these ads here and these ads over here, okay? They have a little yellow or gold little thing that says ad next to it. That lets people know, hey, this is an ad. It didn't used to be there. They added that. I don't know when they added it, but it was the uh, – in the past, it didn't used to be there, so people kind of get confused, which is an ad, what's not an ad. Those are the ads, okay? What we're talking about is spending money with Google to have your advertisement show up right there. Now, why would you want to do this? What situations would, would you want to do this? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples, but it's the fastest way to get web traffic and leads. Do this in addition to SEO, not instead of. We need to do both of these together. Today's topic is pay-per-click, but we will have some conversation with you about SEO, but today we really want to talk about the pay-per-click. The lead quality is just as good as SEO. This is a, de a debatable topic in some circles, not in this circle. In this circle, here's what we see. The pay-per-click leads convert into big-time sales, okay? Should be one of your most reliable, low-cost lead sources. Again, how many unlimited, high-quality, 100 to $200 leads do you want? Let's get started. So let me show you a couple of ideas here. Categories that you already dominate in SEO. Somebody says, well, I'm already you know, doing real well in SEO. I don't know if I need to really spend money on pay-per-click. So here's, a, here's an example, bathroom remodeling in Kansas City. And you see down here we've got a company, Jericho Home Improvements, that is ranking very well naturally, organically. Down here they're the first one under the map, Jericho Home Improvements. This is a big company that does you know, good business, and they've been around, and their, their website and the SEO efforts are good. But we also see that they're right here as the first ad that shows up. And you might say, well, why would you want their ad to show up here? And the reason is real simple. Look right above that. You see a couple more ads. You see a Remodeler. You see Empire Remodeling KC. Over on the right, you see a, several others. And the answer is we want to make sure that we get seen. Look what Google has done. I need you to understand something. If you look up here, you've got three ads on the top, and then you've got a, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the right. These are ads that show up before the organic ads show up. It's not ads, the organic results. 
And you need to understand why, because Google has a vested interest in the paying ads to show up first, because when people click on those, Google gets paid. When people click on these organic search results, Google doesn't get paid. It's real simple. They have a vested interest in making sure that the ads show up first. So even if you're dominating an SEO, you say, well, I don't know if I want to pay for this link if I'm already paying to show up first or second in the, in the organic search results. Well, fine, then you're leaving it to chance that people might click these other ads first and never get around to clicking you. Well, hey, Rich, are you saying that it's a waste of time to have my uh, SEO putting me in the first, first place or the first page? And the answer is, of course not. It's called both and. It's not either or. Let's make sure that we're dominating. Here's another situation. A new product category. So up here you see walk-in bathtubs in Kansas City. And you see down here the first organic result is a company called, uh, uh, what is it called, Allen Con Online or something like that. And if you look below that, you see Rebath and you see the Safe, safe Step Tub, something like that. And in, in this company that we're talking about up here, Jericho, they don't show up in those search results because it's a new product category. They haven't spent the time, effort, energy, and money yet from a search engine optimization standpoint to show up. But look, you've got these companies down here that have been spending all this time, effort, and money in SEO to show up high in the rankings, and they do, and that's good, and more power to them. And if we were that company, more power to us. But look what we have the ability to do. We have the ability to step right in front and become the top place company. Now, here's what I want you to understand about that. You know, we had this, topic, this talk just a second ago. Well, why would I want to place my ad if I dominate, this is kind of showing you the reverse. The companies that do dominate are still now getting beat out by us, right? So this is really, really good. <clears throat> Some people say, well, what about my own company name? You know, Jericho Home Improvements. Why would I want to do that? If I have, if I'm sh clearly I'm going to show up first, even if I'm not any good at search engine optimization, I'm going to show up first and this company is good. So they're showing up second, and third and fourth and fifth and they're over here. I mean, you can't miss them on the page, and you say, well, why would you want to then pay to put your name up here also? And the answer is real simple, because if you don't pay to put your name up there, somebody else will pay to put their name up there, and you now on your own name are two, three, four, five, six, and seven, but you're not first, right? So you see kitchen solvers right here. They kind of snuck in there in the second place. But this is some of the reasons that we want to make sure that we're mastering this pay-per-click, okay? We don't need to have a discussion, do we, about the need to be online and people are looking here. It's like the new yellow pages and when people don't know who to go to, they go here to, to Google. We're not going to have that discussion. I'm, I'm sort of hoping that you already understand that, okay? So let's go through some of this. I've tried pay-per-click before a few times and it never works. I think 76% of you have said that or maybe you haven't even tried it. Here's the first reason your website is terrible. If, if you're going to give pay-per-click a chance, you have to have a professional website with good content, identity. Obviously, we talk about that around here a lot. This is an example of a, a website. Uh, I was going to show this to you a little bit later, but uh, for sake of time, I'm not. Uh, we show, we've got, this will be on our website. We're updating this part of our website. This company was getting good results with their pay-per-click. We were doing their pay-per-click. Then we stuck their new website on and the lead spiked because the website was better, okay? I'm not going to talk about that a lot right now. Here's number two. If you try to do it yourself, I should say yourself, it's not going to work, okay? You don't understand the basics of it. You don't have time to dedicate it to, to dedicate to it. You think you can rank high just by bidding more than your rivals. I'll show you definitively here in a minute. That does not work. It's a terrible strategy. You don't research the keywords enough. Landing pages are not right. You don't understand what a quality score is that the ad writing is terrible. If you try to take this on yourself, it is almost a guaranteed fail. Now, there's always one guy in every crowd that says, well, wait a second, I'm doing it. I'm getting great results. And the answer is, it's the same as my buddy, Brett, who's, who spends a tremendous amount of time investing in the stock market. And you know what? The guy makes millions of dollars. And the reason is very simple, because he travels for a living. He does uh, training and consulting for credit unions for his uh, job, and he travels all over the country, usually about 15 to 20 days on the road per month, and when he's at the hotel at night, all he does is sit there and either watch Utah Jazz basketball, it's his one hobby, or two, he studies the stock market for hours a day. And you know what? He's really good at it. And if you get really good by studying for hours a day and getting good at it, more power to you. 
but that ain't most of you. In fact, it's almost none of you. The third reason that pay-per-click doesn't work is what we call automated programs. So here's the why. Automated computer programs can manage pay-per-click more efficiently than humans. There's a lot of companies out there that are doing this, but the truth is that it does work to an extent, but you have to have humans that analyze the data and constantly fine-tune the campaigns. If you've got just computers working on pay-per-click, it's not going to work. You've got to have humans that are monitoring it and looking at it. It's kind of like, I don't know, I can't even think of a good example, but just think about something where co computers are doing some heavy lifting, but you've got to have humans watching over it. We can beat automated machines 10 times out of 10, 100% of the time, okay? Some of the culprits are companies like uh, Reach Local, Yodel, Haibu, some of these, you've probably heard of Reach Local. That's one that we used to use, and the reason we used to use it is because it's easy. You go in, you have a, a layperson's amount of knowledge, and we got pretty good at running Reach Local, <coughs> but the problem goes further than just having uh, the, not having the human eyeballs on it. Let me give you a little bit more information on that. As these companies scale up, I'm talking about the automated companies, Haibu, Yodel, Reach Local, they hire inexperienced people to run the systems. I mean, think about a scalpel in the hand of a surgeon versus in your hand. It's just not going to work very good. Okay, a scalpel in the hand of a surgeon versus your hand. But here's the other issue. These companies have huge cost structures, and here's what they end up doing. They plunder from your ad spend. In some cases, it's hard to tell. They spend as much as 50% of the money that you give them on them. And this 50% goes to actually, it's, it's like giving to a charity, and you see these refugees, and you say, well, I want to <coughs> help the earthquake victims, whatever, and you, you give them $1,000, but only 50% 50, 50 of it goes actually to help, and the other 50% goes to manage the help. And you think, man, I, I'm, that's not actually helping. That's what's happening here with your pay-per-click spend. I'm not saying that in every single case it's always 50% or more. I'm saying that 50% of your budget sometimes doesn't even get to this actual spend, okay? That's a huge problem. That creates poor results. It creates a huge client turnover because it doesn't seem like it's working. It kills their companies, and here's the result. This is reach local stock for, let's see, going back to 2010. It maxed out in the mid-upper 20s, and uh, as of July, it was at $3.03, and as of uh, November 2nd, two days ago when I pulled this, it was at $1.43. The company is in the toilet because they suck, because they can't keep customers, because they get sucky results. Okay? High booze, no better. This used to be called the Yellow Pages, and they said, well, nobody wants to buy from the Yellow Pages, so let's call it, let's call it High Boo. And if you look at their stock, it's delisted. It went from, in 2010, the same period where Reach Local was high, it went from 20 something dollars down to nothing. Nothing. Th this is High Boo. Congratulations. Okay? Yodel, another company out there, they filed for an IPO in 2000. 14, uh, excuse me, they filed in 2013, but they actually haven't launched yet. Look at this. Yodel's revenues rose 22% to $169.1 million in 2013, while its net loss almost doubled to $10.4 million. These companies are losing money hand over fist, so what they do is they plunder from your ad spend. It's just a bad model. It doesn't work, okay? So why is it so hard to get pay-per-click to work? Now, I'm going to show you why it's hard to make it work, okay? This is a video. You can look it up. It's called Insights on the AdWord Auction. If you are a nerd and you want to watch this, go ahead and watch it. It's done by Hal Varian, chief economist from Google, and he explains how these auctions work, okay? And he shows these uh, graphs and charts, and he goes through it, and it's about an eight or nine, let's see, eight minutes and 15-second video. This guy's kind of a nerd. He looks kind of like Bill Gates, but he's not. And uh, I'm telling you, you can learn how to do this stuff. And I'm going to walk you through this. I actually took this presentation that Hal shows on this YouTube video, and I had it created into a uh, PowerPoint presentation. And I'm going to walk you through it, but I'm just going to warn you right now. What's about to happen is this. I'm going to start walking you through this short PowerPoint presentation. It's about seven slides long, and about one and a half or two slides in, we're going to start to hit the rails, and about three slides in, we're going to shoot, start shooting sparks, and by about four or five slides in, the wheels are going to come flying off, and by the end of it, we're going to go careening over the mountain off the cliff and explode into a giant fireball. What I'm trying to say is, when you try to follow and understand how this actually works, 
it is incredibly complicated, okay? And this is why everybody struggles to make this work. So here we go. And again, just know going in that I'm not trying to actually take you through and train you on how to do this. That would be insane. You would, it would do no good because why would you want to understand this stuff? So here's how it works. You've got four companies that are bidding, four, three, two, and one dollars. That's their bid. But Google has something called second place auction, which means you actually only have to pay what the person behind you bid. So that $4 bid becomes three, the $3 bid becomes two, the $2 bid becomes one, and the $1 bid, well, it just goes away. They don't even actually have a bid anymore. So Hal goes, comes back in this video about two minutes in and starts talking to us about things that make Google's auction work. And he talks about the expected click-through rate and landing page quality and, and the uh, ad relevance and things like that. And so he comes back and he says, okay, we've got the four companies. They've been four, three, two, and one dollars. Now, if you go through these issues called expected click-through rate, and this is where the sparks are going to start flying off your brain a little bit, landing page quality and ad revenue, here's what we find. The guy that bid four dollars has a high ad quality. The three dollar guy has a low, high, medium, you can see. And then there's a thing called format. The way that you format it can also impact, and you see that these ones have high, no formatting, high format, high quality formatting medium, and this creates what we call an ad rank, where your ad will actually show up. Now, if you start to score these things, this one here scores 5, 15, 20, and 8. Now, I'm just going down Hal Varian's uh, video here that nobody really understands except for the nerds, and here's what happens. They start to reposition themselves because the $2 bid is actually better because it has a high quality and a high format, so it ranks a 20. And for some reason, the one that bid $3 but has a low quality format and no format impact goes up to uh, a rank of 15 and so on and so forth. So here's what we're trying to show you is the guy that bid $4 actually has enough problems with his ad going on that he ranks the lowest and he actually gets dropped. Now, you might be saying, well, I don't understand that, Rich, and that's exactly the point. Nobody understands this except for the nerds that know how to run this. And I could keep going through this, and I could show you how the cost actually is lower than the cost, but you got to understand that a $1 bid actually becomes $0.69, cents, and the $4 bid, again, it gets thrown out because it's low quality. Okay, and then, you know, this just going through this guy's presentation. And so this guy moves up, and he becomes more important. And at the end, here's what happens. Your head explodes because you look at all this, and you go, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I thought I was bidding. I thought I had high quality, and I didn't. And, I, and for some reason, it's not working. Now, I warned you before I started that that it wasn't an actual attempt to train you on how to do that. It was simply put there to show you that this is incredibly complex stuff. And if you try to understand it yourself, here's what's going to happen. Your head is going to explode, just like the guy on the screen. Okay? So the question then becomes, can it actually even work at all? Is it so complex that it can't work at all? Well, let's take a look at Google's stock chart. Starting in 2005 at a price down there, I don't know where it started, maybe somewhere around 50 it looks like. And uh, as of two days ago, it was at 717, and it just keeps going up, up, and up. Here's a, an article from earlier this year, Google first quarter earnings, ad revenues post growth once again, and it, it, these ad revenues just keep going up. Somebody keeps paying for these ads, so somebody must be getting some use from it. Now, there's a Rubik's Cube on your screen. I'm going to tell you a little story. A couple weeks ago, it was my 11-year-old son's birthday. He wanted a Rubik's Cube, so we got him a Rubik's Cube. So he starts playing around with it and fiddling around with it, and he's 11, and he's not super diligent at learning how to do it. And so he just kind of played with it, and it just got all mixed up. So I picked it up, and I started fiddling with it. And after a few minutes, I got one side, and then I got you know a couple of the other things, and I thought, I don't know how to do this. So I found that if I went onto my phone, you go to the Rubik's Cube website, that they've got solutions that teaches you how to solve it. And if you look down here, you see that they name each of the faces, front, upper, right, and you've got a uh, clockwise, clockwise turn and a counterclockwise turn, and it teaches you all these little things about how to create the first layer, then the second layer, then the yellow cross, and then you get the whole top, and then you do certain moves, and, it come, and you solve the cube. And after a while, guess what? It took me about a week, but I learned how to solve the cube without looking at my phone. Now, it took about, I would say probably about five total hours, maybe six or seven at the most, 
to learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube. But here's the funny thing. Even when I'm solving the Rubik's Cube, guess what? I'm having to stop and consciously stop down and think, okay, right, backwards, left, top, twice, forward. Oh, geez, if I mess up, I have to start over. And uh, the fastest I was able to solve the cube was about three and a half or four minutes, something like that. Now, let's compare that to this guy. <laughs> this guy's name is Colin Burns. He set the world record. He solved the Rubik's Cube in 5.25 seconds. And there's a picture of him on, from the YouTube video when he solved it in 5.25 seconds. Now, here's why I'm showing you this guy. There's, there's some, you know, we could say this for any skill in life, right? But I just happen to be thinking about the Rubik's Cube lately. This guy doesn't have to sit there and think about his moves. He just has done it so much. He's so good at it, so intuitive that he can actually take a cube and he can twist it with his dexterous hands, or that's not the right word, dexterous hands, however you say it. This guy can sit there and do the thing in five flipping seconds. Now, that's who you want doing your pay-per-click. Obviously, we're not talking about Rubik's Cube. We're talking about pay-per-click. But you want the guy who can sit there and flip those dial switches and levers and those ad ranks and those costs and those bids and all that stuff that Hal Varian went through in that incredibly complicated video and can do it in about 5.25 seconds when your best prayer is to kind of sort of understand how it might work after several hours of study. And by the way, it's been a week since I solved the Rubik's Cube and I picked it up again and tried to solve it and I couldn't do it because I forgot how. Yeah. So here's how we do it. So we went and we took this guy and we cut him out and we found the Rain Man when it comes to not Rubik's Cube. Obviously, that was just an example. I think everybody understands it's a metaphor. We found the Rain Man of pay-per-click. And his name is Tim. And you read about it in the letter that I sent over and you think, oh, geez, who is this guy? Well, he's a guy that has cracked the code. He's not the only guy on the planet that knows this stuff. Just like that guy in that, that Rubik's Cube contest isn't the only guy that can solve it in five seconds. Some other guys can solve it in maybe six or seven. That's still pretty good, right? But this guy is a cut above. And the reason I call him Rain Man is because, not because he's you know mentally challenged like uh, Raymond was in Rain Man, but because he understands so much about pay-per-click that it's actually quite difficult to have a conversation with him about it. If you say, hey, explain this to me, she will give you a 10-minute answer to what you thought was like a 15-second question. And it's just overload, and he's so thoroughly indoctrinated and intuitive when it comes to pay-per-click that it's insane. And we interviewed this guy. We sorted out, you know, lots of different guys and situations and companies. We looked at it all, and we said, we've got to have this guy. So we brought him on board. He now works for MYM. And here's what we've been able to accomplish with Tim. We've created a team around Tim. It's not just Tim. He's got a whole team. And the first and foremost thing is it's all about leads. We don't care about clicks. We only care about leads. Now, if you go talk to every pay-per-click company out there, they're all going to be talking about clicks and what's your average cost per click. And you know what? We can measure cost per click, so we do measure cost per click. But here's what we really want to know. How much are leads? We record every phone call with what we call a proxy site transcribe them, and assign all calls to a category. And here's what the categories are. It's either a lead, a bona fide sales opportunity with contact information, or it's a lost opportunity, okay, one that you couldn't convert on the phone or it was handled poorly by the person on the phone, or there might have been a call issue, which is it, it wasn't answered or the call got dropped or something happened funky with the phone call, or what we call a zero call, which is somebody that called from you, they clicked on your ad, got your phone number, and tried to sell you copy or toner, or it was the wrong number, or they were trying to sell you advertising, whatever number of things, or it might have been a service or a, a customer call. So somebody that you've already been talking to, somebody that maybe set up a lead appointment with you yesterday, one of your customers calling to ask, you know, uh, status of the job, or any of those types of things where they found your number via your pay-per-click ad, okay, those are called service and customer calls and we sort them out. Now, let me just show you how this works with this um, proxy site. If you look here at this website, this is a, a, a remodeling page for Jericho. If you look here at the top, you see the phone number is 596-0000. That's their normal phone number. That's the one that they advertise you know, in different uh, print and media things. It's also their main number for their office. But if you click on their pay-per-click ad, that number right there does not show up this number right here shows up. This is the proxy number. So everything else about the website is 100,000 million percent exactly the same. 
but the phone number changes so that when somebody dials it, we sort of intercept that phone call and have the ability now to record it so that we can see what's actually happening, right? So we don't just record that a call came in. We actually record that call and we say, well, what happened with that call? And then we create a report. And this report is said to you every single week. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, we're in the process of changing the formatting of our report so that it's a little more user-friendly. Remember, Tim is uh, a rain man. The guy is a genius. And he looks at all these reports, and they're on spreadsheets, and they're extraordinarily complicated, and they make my you know eyeballs melt sometimes when I look at them because there's so much data on them. <laughs> so we went to Tim and said, hey, we've got to make these reports more user-friendly. And I'll show you a quick glimpse of that in a minute. But here's the, here's the point. The data is there, okay? And if you look at this, if it's green, that means it was a lead. So you look at this and you say, okay, this person's name was Sharon uh, Morgan. It's a new lead. Voicemail, 308. If you click on that, it'll open and show you more data on it. Uh, the next one you see uh, was an existing customer. So that was not a lead. Then below that, uh, you see wireless caller. This was a new lead. Stephanie Briggs. Oh, look at this. If you look right above, on line two and then line three, the blue and then the green, Stephanie Briggs. She called twice. Now you might say, well, why did she call twice? And the answer is we don't know and it really isn't that important. But here's what we do know, not two leads, right? So you get your report from Reach Local. Here's what they're going to tell you. Oh, you've got all these calls. Look at all these calls you've got. Now, first of all, there's only going to be half as many calls as there should have been because they took half of your money and they spent it in their own pockets. But number two, they're going to tell you that all the calls are leads. They're not going to distinguish that. They're not going to differentiate. They're not going to call them leads. They're only going to say that they're calls, but their insinuation, and they're going to pop up their chest and say, hey, these are, these are calls. Wink, wink, they're leads, but in reality, they're not. Look at the fourth one down. We recently purchased a home, and the kitchen was remodeled. I want to know if your company did it. And then we looked it up. Yes, we did it. So that was not a lead. You say, well, crap, I don't like all these people paying me having to pay to have these people click to ask these kind of stupid questions or for Mary Briggs to call back and ask you know, a question, why couldn't she just call our regular number? Why am I spending money on that? And the answer is, don't worry about it. All you need to look at, the only thing you need to look at is what is your cost per lead, okay? How much are the leads costing you? That's the important metric. That's how you measure everything else in your business. Why would you suddenly change it for pay-per-click? And the answer is, I don't know, because you don't actually usually know how many leads that you have from pay-per-click. You just know that you have this big jumble of weird calls. Okay, Angela, we're looking at doing some kitchen remodeling, new countertops. It was a lost opportunity. It was not handled properly. They didn't properly convert that into a sales opportunity, so they didn't get a lead. <coughs> now, here's what we count that as. Not a lead. Here's why. It wasn't a lead. And then you look below that, just trying to give you a feel for this. We're looking for countertops. We set an appointment, certain time, certain place. You can see uh, down here a yellow one, rang, no answer, hung up. Okay, that's a, that's a no call. And uh, let's go down here. You'll see here's some examples of a zero call. Uh, I'm looking at about the fourth one down. Yes, I was driving a little while ago uh, about help heard about you helping Asian children. They're just talking about a, uh, a uh, radio ad that this company runs. It's actually Haitian children, not Asian children. I wanted to let you know our church is also doing some of those things. I'm sure our CEO would love to, to talk with you. My name is Kim Schnickel with St. Andrew's Church. Sorry he's in a meeting. This is called not a lead, okay? And if you look at this particular page, here's what you see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten opportunities but only three leads you say well I don't like that I wish there was more leads and here's what I'm trying to tell you quit trying to control whether or not somebody becomes a lead let the chips fall where they may but start thinking differently and saying I want to know how much I'm paying for leads okay now the next thing we do is we utilize online chat right gives prospect a low-risk way to engage in a conversation with you think about it for a minute if somebody's looking to remodel their kitchen or put on a new roof or you know, whatever it is that you happen to sell, and they're online, for them to pick up the phone and call, they're going to have to be really pretty convinced and ready. And there's going to be a lot of people that fit that category. But some of them may just want to, in a very low-risk way, ask you a question via chat. And we found that this is a phenomenal 
tool. It works awesome. I mean, it works awesome. Okay. During business hours, we attempt to convert the people that that are chat to phone leads. It's a hot swap. We say, hey, can we put you in touch with somebody right now? Can we call you? And then we call them, and then uh, hopefully it becomes a lead through that. After hours, we collect their contact information. If they won't let us hot swap, we'll still see if we can get their contact information and become a lead. We charge $20 per chat, whether it's an organic uh, originated uh, web inquiry or if it came from pay-per-click. It doesn't matter. It's $20 per chat. Some people say, well, why would I pay $20? to have a chat with somebody that's just going to pick up the phone and call me anyway. And the answer is we know from looking at our statistics that your number of leads goes up when your chat gets instituted. Think about it for a minute. If it's $20 per lead, let's see, that's $5 per hundred. That's 50 chats for a thousand dollars. If you were able to get an extra four or five leads per month for a thousand dollars because you had chat versus not having chat, would you would you be interested? You'd be insane not to. Now, quick clarification, it's $20 per chat if you're a client that's doing pay-per-click advertising. We do have a small number of clients that don't do pay-per-click, I can't even talk anymore, pay-per-click advertising, they only do the chat, and in those cases, it's more money. It's $35, I believe, okay? The lead counts go up by a lot. So this gives you an idea <clears throat> when this, web page first comes on this thing here that says need ch need help start chat it kind of slowly drops down from the top I don't have it animated on here but uh, you know that that's what it looks like and then people start to chat it and there's an opportunity for them to do it in Spanish if you want that opportunity to be there now let's take a look at what the chat leads look like it's pretty simple okay if you look on here over on the left ones that are in blue came from pay-per-click and ones that are in green excuse me ones that are in blue came from organic search ones that are in green came from pay-per-click okay so you can actually um, differentiate and see okay well where are these chats originating from so this is uh, from 730 to 89 you see there's a lot of chats there okay we got some noise going on here I'm gonna cut that out give me just a second um, let me cut that noise right out. Okay, hopefully you can still hear me. All right, let me show you how this works. <clears throat> so if you click on any of these, you can read the whole you can read the whole chat. I'm in a uh, building, a bar, need two pieces of granite, two rectangles with a uh, finished front edge, et cetera, et cetera. And they set the appointment, it becomes a lead. Okay. And these are all tracked right there on the weekly report. Now, we do a total on this. So how many total calls came in? Now, this is for uh, a one-month period of time for this particular client. 79 total calls came in. You say, well, that's pretty good. That's a lot of calls. Well, actually, only 16 of those were leads. Okay? Now, here's what you've got to remember. We only care about leads. Okay? I could care less how many people call in for customer service or to ask if they can donate money to, to Haitian children. I mean, those things need to be handled, but I don't want to think about those in terms of the results of this campaign. I want to know how much did I pay for leads. Now, you also see chat calls. Those are ones that we converted over from chats into phone calls. You see lost opportunities. There was 13. There was 11 that had call issues. 18 were zero calls, like the person asking for donations. We had nine customer service calls for a total of 79. If you add up the, the lost opportunities and the call issues, it was 24 uh, or 30% of those calls. So if you look down here, here's what you see. There were 16 revenue calls. We, we take out the chat calls here uh, because they didn't originate from a phone call. They were converted to a phone call. There was one web event. That means somebody that filled out a form. There were 17 uh, total uh, leads from that. Then there was also 33 leads from chat. Okay, from the previous couple of slides, 33 chat leads for a total of 50 leads from pay-per-click. 50 pay-per-click leads that cost his company $7,622.06 for a total cost per lead of $152.44. Now, here's my question. Is that worth it? Is it worth it? You say, well, I don't know. I don't like to spend that much money for leads. 
well, then you need to find something else to do with your life because this is called remodeling and this is what it costs to get leads. These are real leads. This is the same company that I profiled in the letter <clears throat> that did, well, I think I've got the numbers here. Oh, let me show you this real quick. This is what the portal that we're working on looks like. In fact, I think I've got this live. I can kind of drag it over there and show it to you. Yeah, let me put this on the screen. Now, this is these are not the real numbers, so don't look at these numbers and think, okay, it's $108. The numbers haven't been loaded in, but this is what it's going to kind of look like. Now, you won't have this over here. This is for me to look at my various clients. You'll only be able to see your numbers when you log in for your company. But here's what you see. 28 calls, 32 chats, 17 forms, three campaigns. It talks about the spend per day, the impression share, the total cost. There will be a whole bunch of data on here. Uh, this will be ready to go probably by about December 1st at the latest. So that's just something to look forward to. I don't want to spend any time on it right now, but uh, just get the idea. This reporting is going to go from this sort of uh, crazy Rain Man spreadsheet to a really cool, easy to look at, easy to interpret, easy to understand um, uh, web portal. Okay. Okay. Hopefully my technology is not dying. So what are the results? Well, let's just take a look. You saw these in the letter, but I'll just re rehearse them to you here. Gutter Company in Ohio, $71 leads. $125 lead. These are the real numbers. You know, this wasn't, this wasn't, hey, let's go cherry pick the very best ones and let's show on the webinar that, you know, every time you do pay-per-click, the lead is $71. That's not true. Look, this one over here, bathroom remodel in Philadelphia is $185. Roofing company, Salt Lake, $67, $132. You can see the range here is about $67 to $185. Uh, $151. I think we're about to talk to this guy in just a minute. $63, I think that's Matt. Exterior remodeler, $63. And you look at this and you say, well, why does it vary so much? And the answer is because it does. It just varies. We found that in the same city even, companies in different industries have different amounts, different uh, lead amounts. And it varies from month to month. We found that when it's the fall or the spring and there's more companies that are actively competing in the AdWords uh, auctions, that the prices go up because we have to bid more money to get good placement and to make sure that we have good ad rank so it costs more. So your lead costs might go up from 104, it might go up to 120 or 130. It's not, it doesn't just sit there and stay, um, stay uh, stationary all the time. Also, you'll see that your spend amount will go up in some of the busier times. In the fall and in the spring, you'll have to spend more money if you want to capture all the leads because there's just more leads because more people are thinking about it, right? So that's a good thing. Are they responsive? Well, the kitchen bathroom modeler that we're talking about from June 18th to October 16th, so that's what, about two and a half weeks ago, spent $27,000. They closed $624,292. $624, I gotta get a drink, I'm gonna die. Hang on a second. Golly, this stuff is just too good. There's been about 4.41%. This is available to you regardless of your size. Now, let me tell you this. Here's, here's what I want you to know. When I say this is available to you, here's what I don't mean. You're going to get exactly 4.41% spend to sales ratio. Here's what I do mean. You can get as many leads as you want. They're going to cost you somewhere in the range of about $50 to about $200. I don't know how much they're going to cost, but I do know this. They're not going to cost you any more than $200. And that much, I promise you, I'm going to absolutely guarantee because I'll show you our guarantee here in just a second. But here's what I want you to know. You can do this, okay? This is not a, a once-in-a-lifetime, non-replicable situation. Now, here's what you need to understand, the difference between starting budget and target budget. Because here's what happens. Sometimes people look at this and they have a heart attack and they say, $27,000, I just spent $27,000. I'm not asking you to spend $27,000. I'm asking you to spend $3,000. That's a starting budget, okay? You say, well, I don't have $3,000. Well, you know, in some cases we can work a little bit smaller. But here's what you've got to think about. How are you even in business if you don't have a $3,000 advertising budget? I mean, really, how are you even in business if you can't spend $3,000 a month to generate leads for your company? It does, it's, that's, the, that's not even a company. What is that? I don't know what that is. That's, that's a wish or a prayer or something. I'm not sure what that is. 
So you got to spend a little bit of money. If you had $150 per lead and you got 40 leads, it'd cost you $6,000. You close 30% of those in a $10,000 average sale, you could get $120,000 in sales. You could be doing a million dollars a year extra in sales. Let me put this into perspective for you. Let's say that you're a typical customer of ours who's doing a couple million dollars in sales, but you're part of that, what, 76% that's not doing pay-per-click. 76% of you on this call said you're not doing pay-per-click, okay? And you spend $6,000 a month, that's $72,000 a year, you add $120,000 a month. Of course, your capacity has to allow for that. If you don't have any capacity, then that's going to be a problem. But, okay, go with me on the example. <clears throat> you can turn your company <clears throat> from a $2 million company to a $3 million company without doing anything else. Let it sink in for a second. That's why we're having this webinar, because we cracked this code, and it flipping works, okay? And you say, well, I don't know if it works. I don't know if I want to do it. And I tried it before, and it didn't happen, and all that kind of stuff. And here's what I'm telling you. I'm trying to give you a million dollars in sales. And, yeah, you're going to have to do the spend, and, yeah, you're going to have to try it out, and, yeah, there might be some fits and starts, but I'm telling you, it works, okay? Okay. Let me see. Where are we at? Okay. The little guy can beat the big guy in the world of pay-per-click. Think about this. Let's say that you – are sitting in the middle of a decent-sized city. Let's say you're in Minneapolis, St. Paul, or you're sitting there in Orange County, Orange County, California, you're sitting there in Omaha, Nebraska, or something like that. And you say, well, geez, we, we would never spend six, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month on pay-per-click advertising. Do you realize that you can spend the same money as the big guy and get the same results as the big guy? You can do that. Do you realize that we have clients that spend – a hundred and thirty five thousand dollars a month on pay-per-click advertising another customer of mine spends seventy thousand dollars a month on pay-per-click advertising seventy thousand dollars a month seventy why it's obvious <laughs> it doesn't even require an answer how much does it cost to do this with us so we've got four levels of pay-per-click level one two three and four that's the best name we could come up with we're a marketing company the best thing we could come up with was level one level two level three level four i mean if you want platinum or diamond or whatever you call it that i don't care but it costs 500 dollars a month up to 7.99 a month depending on how much your ad spend is if your ad spends under 5,000 a month then it's 500 dollars a month for us to manage that here's the cool part though if you're already a bundle customer then it's already included and you're just not using it probably so we will do it for you for no extra cost on the management fee side of things. And if you do, if you're not a current bundle customer of ours, you might want to talk to uh, Brian Baum and our COO about uh, signing up for that. But regardless of that, I mean, this is cheap, okay? So let's talk to an MYM customer, Matt Colligan. Now, this I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a little bit rough maybe. I haven't actually talked to Matt before, <clears throat> and uh, he's supposed to be on here. So let me see if I can find him. And let's see. The word is he's on here, but we can't see him. Let's see. Can you hear me, Rich? Oh, yeah, there you are. Is that you, Matt? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Even, I thought I was going to have to click something to get you on, but you just sort of <laughs> appeared. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, I appreciate you taking a few minutes to hop on here. I know that we asked you sort of as a favor. And uh, just uh, let the record show, I haven't actually talked to you before this. Uh, I know, I think you probably talked to either Leslie or Brian. Who who'd you talk to? Uh, both, Leslie and Brian. Oh, okay. Well, I, I appreciate you being on I'm about to lose my voice, Matt. Sorry about that. I'm about to die. Or I don't know what's happening. But anyway, uh, just give us, here's what I want to know. And this is what the people on the call want to hear. Give us your experience, not just with MYM and pay-per-click, but I want to know sort of where you came from. Have you tried this before? Maybe you didn't have luck or success with it. Just kind of give me the story and tell me about it a little bit. Uh, well, the the bottom line is I originally came from Wait, first, 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 tell us who you are and where you're at and what you sell. So there's a frame of reference. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Matt Colligan. I own a company called Colorado Living, based out of Denver, and uh, we uh, we sell window replacement windows and uh, bathrooms and 
I originally came out of uh, Champion Windows. I was a champion for 10 years, so we had a significant budget, and we've I pretty much tested a lot of things. And when I left Champion, uh, after I worked out my non-compete, I started uh, uh, Colorado Living, and yeah, you know, we played with uh, pay-per-click, knowing that uh, that is a quick way to generate leads, as our organic uh, uh, strategy and our SEO strategy was uh, kind of percolating. And uh, I probably went through four different uh, pay-per-click companies. Um, the problem I think everybody can, will, will agree with is most of these pay-per-click companies, you don't get reporting. They tell you that you're going to get reporting, but you don't ever get it. Um, and when you do get it, it's convoluted and you can't figure out what the hell is going on. Um, so that was my experience. And so I was just dumping money into pay-per-click and letting it how much? Seeing if we can uh, make it work. Um, How much were you dumping in? Seven to ten thousand a month. Okay. And how long ago was this? A uh, year ago. Okay. And how was that working from a lead standpoint? It was generating some leads, but it wasn't generating what I wanted. And I track everything. I use Market Sharp. I track everything. So. Well, and I what was your cost per lead on that? Would you say? Five six hundred dollars. Okay, keep going. Um, so I said, "Screw this! I can't do this anymore." So I stopped it and I sat dormant for quite a while. And I had some uh, what I felt were really high power people, real smart people. You talk to these technology people, and you know they can talk the they talk the talk, and uh, they give you you know they throw out every buzzword under the sun and um, you know, I did my research, and I thought I had the right people doing it, and bottom line is, is I didn't. And uh, then Brian called me and said, hey, we're doing this uh, pay-per-click program. Um, and I said, I'm not interested. <laughs> I, I don't believe it. And um, he, talked me, uh, he talked me into, you know, starting with a small budget, and I said, well, uh, Okay, I'll do it with a small budget because I'm I'm all about the leads. I my uh, my budget is set at the beginning of the year. I work on a cost per lead. I, I know what my marketing percentage needs to be. So, you know, we have the proper markup. So I I'm a I'm willing to spend money as long as we can just have a return. And so I have a little bit of a test uh, fund, a treasure chest, if you will, and I use some of that money to to experiment with you guys and. You know what? It's been working. So how long so, have you been working it with us so far? I think uh, three three cycles, four cycles. Okay. And what's the what's the cost per lead? Right now, the cost per lead I think is two twenty five. But first, That's you know, I I really probably didn't do you guys any favors. Um, I just put my toe in the water and I said, okay, bathrooms only in this area. Prove to me that it'll work. And so now we're adding more budget to it and we're expanding our area because it's proven out. And how much are you spending now per month? Uh, I think we're up to probably 5,000. Okay. <laughs> and are you seeing the cost per lead come down? Well, see, once we started, once we add windows, um, I know the cost per lead will come down. And we just added windows in this last cycle. So that will start to come down. But it's kind of in a, you know, the, <clears throat> the time of the year uh, obviously plays into into that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay. But, I mean, at two, even at 225 for an appointment, that's not just for a lead. That's for appointment, I think any of us would take 225 for an appointment. So is the actual a confirmed you appointment? Know, yeah, not every lead obviously converts into an appointment. So if we just looked at the straight lead cost, it, it's going to be even lower, and then you factor in right. some dropout. Is that right? Right. Okay. Well, fantastic. Um, how's the reporting? Have you actually been getting the reporting that you promised? Yeah, we're. we're 
uh, Tim does a real nice job. I really enjoy working with Tim on it, and uh, he does provide the reports every week, and it's simple to understand. And uh, you know, he gives you the he gives you the summary, and then there's the detail behind it. Um, you know, because I I verify everything. So I look, I verify the chats, I verify the phone calls. I, I mean, I make sure that I take a look at every bit of it because it was such a, it was kind of a, the bane of my existence there for a while. <laughs> okay, well, I appreciate you spending a few minutes and, and talking with us about it. Uh, obviously, we're trying to help additional customers of ours to kind of overcome that reluctance that you had. Some of these people have been deeply scarred. It sounds like you were pretty deeply scarred too. So uh, I, I appreciate you lending. Well, it's brutal. Uh, they testimony. take advantage of you. You know, they <laughs> they take advantage of people. And the you know what I like about uh, what the way you guys are doing it is that uh, you guys are doing it for the home improvement industry. Most of these guys out there that do it don't do it for the home improvement industry. So they don't know our keywords. They don't know what to. They don't know the right things to go after. You know. But I think the first guy that I, I went for, uh, we were buying, uh, you know, window uh, glass. Uh, it ended up being iPhone glass repair. Um, like, you can't do this. I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> wow. So, well, you the good thing about uh, Tim, like I've explained on the call, I don't know if you were on earlier, we, we call him the rain man of pay-per-click, and, and it's critical that that we make that distinction because here's what that really means. Tim, not only is he really good at it, but he loves it. And he his challenge to himself is to be as good at it as possible. It, it yeah, it's a money making venture and of course everybody's in this to make money. We are, you are, we all are. But for him it's really a challenge and uh and uh you know that's the first and foremost thing. So I appreciate you letting well, a little bit. The of other thing that I appreciate about appreciate about Tim is that he doesn't blow any smoke, and he just shoots it straight. And I find that that's the I I, I can't make decisions based on somebody blowing smoke my way. Um, I can only make the right decisions based on some a straight shooter, and I feel like I get that from Tim. All right, fantastic. Any any last comments? If not, I'll let you go. Nope, that's it. All right, Tim, I appreciate you. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you dialed in, so I'll let you figure out how to dial yeah. out, I guess. <laughs> thanks, man. All right, thanks. All right, we'll see you. All right, uh, here's what we're going to do as a guarantee, because uh, I want you to do this. Here's how it works. I want you to spend $3,000 in ad spend. You say, well, uh, <clears throat> that's a little bit high. I want to put my toe in the water. Give us a call. We'll talk to you about it. We're going to guarantee on your $3,000 that you'll get at least 15 leads. 15 leads. Real leads, okay? That's $200 per lead. That's what we're saying. This is people that, that uh, either call in or come in through a form or come in through the chat, and they say, my name is X. They give you a name. Here's my phone number. And they say, I want to talk to somebody about getting replacement windows or a new roof or a new kitchen or whatever it is that you sell, okay? Now, Matt, he said he took it to the next level, and he was uh, – uh, talking about appointments and there's there is a little bit of a fallout factor there but we're talking about the actual leads that come in hey if if we go through this process and you say to me hey I want to have a debate with you about what is actually a lead versus not a lead I'm going to tell you right now you're not going to have that conversation with me and here's why because we're going to come in a lot lower than this two hundred dollars per lead and if if uh, we come in and we start handing you 20 25 30 leads for your uh, $3,000 and and we say it's 24 leads but you say it's only 21 who cares it doesn't matter it's a great lead cost okay you see how this works I'm not trying to be flippant with you and I'm not trying to say well hey if you don't like this then just kiss my foot that's not it at all I'm saying the results will be sufficiently good that the dickering over was this actual one person actually a lead or not will become inconsequential because the number of people that are leads confirmed or otherwise, will be substantial enough that you're going to fall in love, okay? That's what we're going to do. Do you have 15 leads? We'll spend our money until you get the 15. And if you want to dicker with us about those 15, we'll dicker with you because that would be an unusual situation for both of us, okay? There's no commitment. We're not saying you have to spend $3,000 a month for the rest of your life. If you don't like it, then quit. That's it. 
if you have an off month, if, if you shut down your office for the month of December, then you quit for the month of December. Come back in January, whatever the case is, okay? The guarantee is not ongoing, okay? It's for the first time user only. It's for the first month. So in the second month, we come back, and the lead cost for some reason goes to 221. But, uh, the, the guarantee does not apply. But I'll tell you this. You'll receive weekly reports. If you ever see anything you don't like, just contact us. We can pause your campaign. We can cancel your campaign. We can do anything you want to make sure that it's working for you at all times on an ongoing, real-time basis, okay? So you're not going to get six months down the road and go, hey, this didn't work. That sucks. I want the guarantee to kick in. That's not how it works. The first month, the first cycle, it's guaranteed. If you like what you see, we'll keep going, and we'll monitor it as we go. If you start seeing things you don't like, then you can quit. It's real simple, but nobody quits, okay? You should be working towards your target budget. Here's what you should be doing, spending as much money as possible on pay-per-click. Don't spend any money on anything else until you've maxed out your pay-per-click spend. Why would you do that? Why would you go to a home show and spend money on those leads if you could get all the leads that you wanted for $200 or for $149 or whatever the lead cost is for you? You could add a million dollars in sales to your company with pay-per-click. I'm telling you, it's true. I don't care who your company is. Now, you've got to have capacity. You've got to be able to sell it. You've got to be able to install it. I can't wave a magic wand and make you magically have more capacity, but here's what we can do. We can get you the lead flow to support an extra million dollars in sales if you live in any kind of a market that has any kind of uh, you know, lead flow in it at all. Now, if you live in you know, uh, podunk nowhere, that might be a different story, but you get the idea, okay? So do this. Now, don't hang up because I'm going to go through just a little bit of information on financing, but this is the sort of wrap-up for um, <clears throat> pay-per-click. Send me an email, richardharshaw at mymonline.com. Give me your cell number. Give me two times this week that you're available to talk. Let me know that you want to blow up your business using pay-per-click. Now, I am not going to be the one that calls you back. You're going to get a, a confirmation phone call slash email from Leslie Gerbrandt, and you're going to end up talking to Brian Bauman, the same person that uh, Matt Colligan that we just talked to, talked to. I just said talk to, talk to, so that's kind of funny. But you're going to talk to Brian. He's going to walk you through it, help you understand it. Uh, we'll get Tim involved uh, at the appropriate time to do some uh, estimations on what your target spend should be. In other words, I want you knowing from day one how much money you should be spending. If it's ten or $15,000 a month, I want you to know that number. You don't have to start there. The starting budget will be 3000 Then we'll work our way up to it. Just like Matt said, he stuck his toe in the water. Now he's doing $5,000 a month. You know, who knows, as that grows and he gets more success with the window part of his business, then hopefully that will go up to seven, eight, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month. When I say hopefully, I mean hopefully for his sake. Hopefully he'll be getting enough leads that he'll be throwing every last penny he has at it, okay? Now, <clears throat> we're going to shift gears. We're going to talk about financing, and I want to tell you a little story, okay? It starts at the dentist. This goes back. It's about two years ago, maybe two and a half or three years ago at this point, but here's what happened. My family changed uh, health insurance, and the previous health insurance we had had dental insurance tied into it. They were, they were kind of packaged together. And we switched to a different health insurance, and they didn't have dental insurance packaged in. So for a period of about almost a year and a half to two years, we didn't go to the dentist. Nobody in our family went. I know it's kind of gross, and you're supposed to go and all that stuff, but we just didn't go. We never got around to it. Finally, my wife said, hey, we got to go. She hauled all the kids over there, had six kids still living at, at home at the time. <clears throat> and uh, my wife went, and I went, so all eight of us went. And here's what happened. The dentist came back, and he said, it's going to be $8,214.70 to do everything that your whole family needs. That included some root canals, some, some, a, a lot of fillings. It included closing a gap on one of my daughter's two front teeth. It included taking all of my old fillings out and replacing them with the new kind of fillings. It was $8,200. And I said to my wife, okay, let's prioritize. Which of those things do we want to do first? Now, here's what you need to know about this. <clears throat> I can afford $8,200 for dental work. I have the money. It's, it's available. I'm not saying I'm the richest man on the planet, and I'm not saying that my name's Donald Trump or anything like that. Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I can afford $8,200 for dental work, but here's what I'm also saying. I didn't want to afford $8,200 for dental work. I thought, geez, what can we get away with not doing? My wife said, well, wait a second. The dentist said that he has a financing thing. Here's a brochure, and they had, they had a, a thing. It was uh, 12, months, uh, no, 12 months, no interest, no, pay, no payments. No, it was 12 months, no interest. As long as you pay within 12 months, there's no interest. So I thought, okay, that's 
and I think I ended up paying something like $750 a month. I wanted to get a little bit ahead of it, and I just fit it right into my monthly budget. It was real easy for me to fit into my budget, and, I, and we did the whole thing right up front. Okay, So that dentist got that sale that otherwise he was not going to get. He was only going to get a portion of it. So let's talk about financing and how it can help your company as a remodeler. Now, the first thing is I want to cover a couple of myths. The first myth is that people say my customers don't need or they don't want financing, and the truth is that they're lying. That's not true. Some of them don't, but a lot of them really absolutely do need it and would buy more from you if it were available. They don't know to ask for it. They'll use it if it's available. Here's what we know from doing uh, research uh, within this industry. 38% of homeowners said they would have not have made the purchase without financing. Um, also, another myth is that people say it costs too much, so I'm only going to use it as a last-ditch effort. So in other words, you're a remodeling company, and you say, well, okay, I have financing available, but I'm not going to make it available to my customers unless they say no at the point of sale. Then I'll whip out this thing called financing and see if it'll make a difference and get them to take the next step. And I'm telling you, this is not a good strategy because you're going to be missing a lot of sales. You're going to be missing a lot of sales. Oh, whoops. The truth is financing does not cost you any money. It makes you money. This is a, this is a bona fide fact. This isn't an opinion. This is based on so much data from huge companies that it's ridiculous. I'm going to show you what the data says, okay? Average sale goes up. This is from industry statistics in the home improvement industry. Average sale, 5,519. Average sale with no interest if paid in 12 months offer. We also know that if you offer no interest if paid in up to 36 months, it goes up to $6,800. It goes up to $74 if you have a longer-term low APR finance offer. <clears throat> Assume that it's 4,500 if there's no financing involved. Now, we don't know that number because the finance companies that track this stuff don't have the ability to track how much was the sale without financing. They can't track that because they're not involved, right? It's an increase of 67%. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, okay? Now, here's what we've seen. We've, we've been harping on financing now for the better part of 10 years. I've been heavily involved in home improvement remodeling since 2005, and almost since day one, I've been talking about you've got to do, uh, you've got to offer this financing. And here's what we found. Most companies are still very reluctant to do it. But here's what uh, we see when we get companies to actually sign up with it. Plaza Organization Company was doing $3,500 average sale. They dipped down more recently $2,800. They were accepting credit cards but no other financing. The first appointment after getting approved for financing, $7,700 sale customer said, let's go ahead and do all three clauses at once instead of spacing it out over the course of time. This is the kind of thing that happens. Customers are more willing and able and ready to spend money when they feel like they can fit it into their budget instead of having to come out of pocket for one huge amount. Okay? Run your numbers. If you average, if average no financing sale is $4,500 and you offer low term APR and it's $7,400, the sale price goes up about $3,000. The gross margin goes up about $1,500, assuming a 50% margin. Financing is going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood of about 6%. That's about $450. And this is where a lot of the contractors bellyache and say, well, I don't want to pay $450 or I'll, I'll, I'm only willing to pay it in a last-ditch effort. But here's what I'm trying to tell you. If the difference is $4,500 versus $7,500, you're losing money. The increased gross margin is about $1,000. Now, you can run your numbers, and you can create ratios and percentages. You can say, well, my gross margin percentage went down. And I look at you and slap you in the face and say, are you insane? You're making $1,000 more in gross margin. Who cares what the percentage is? It's pure, creamy profit. If you were able to increase your average sale and therefore your average gross margin by $1,000 per sale, and you did 20,000, excuse me, 20 sales per month, that's a half a million dollars a year in margin. That's free just from, av just from using the financing. You say, well, I don't know if those numbers are accurate. Well, what if they're even close, okay? <clears throat> yeah, here's what I recommend with financing. Don't use it as a last-ditch effort. Use it to set the stage. 
sell payments just like car companies do. You never see a car advertised for $73,000 or $22,000. You always see it advertised for what? $499. I mean, you can be looking at a $70,000 truck on TV and the commercial says $349 a month. You're thinking, how is that even possible? You know, it's for a thousand months, maybe. I don't know. Here's what you say, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect. This is when you first sit down with them. We offer several financing options to make this project affordable. How much money do you feel would comfortably fit into your monthly budget to make this project happen? Before you've ever talked to them about the product or the money or anything, and they're going to give you a couple of different possible answers. One of the answers is they might say, well, we don't want to use financing. We just got cash. Great. Now you know. They were going to have cash and use cash if you didn't offer financing. You think they're going to be offended and quit the appointment and leave just because you offered this and you said this? No. <clears throat> it doesn't change anything. <clears throat> the other <clears throat> answer they might give you is, well, we haven't really thought about it. And so you make them think about it. Or maybe they'll give you a number. And then say, <clears throat> if they say, well, we could afford maybe three or $400 a month. And then you say, you know what? We could absolutely work this into a three to $400 a month payment. If you need to lengthen the, tr the contract, you can do that, okay? So they say three or $400, and you know that that's not going to work on a 60-month contract. Maybe you can do a 72-month contract, okay? And you can make an extra 1000 to $3,000 per profit, profit per customer, okay? <clears throat> Advertise monthly payments on the radio, on your newspaper, on your mailers, on your website. In rehash situations, come in and come hard with financing early in the sales meeting, later in the sales meeting, okay? Let's talk about Green Sky. This is a company that we partnered with on the spot approval during the appointment, okay? This is a company that's taking the industry by storm. They specialize in home improvement marketing. They're better than Interbank. They're better than GE Capital. We've interviewed them all, and we've said, we're going to partner with this company. We're going to proactively push them because we want our clients to make more money. When our clients make more money, then they spend more money with us on stuff like pay-per-click and search engine optimization and websites and advertising and everything else because they're making more money. Everybody makes more money because this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to help everybody succeed. Green Sky is a fantastic company. They'll give, you, they'll give your customers on-the-spot approval. The customer is issued an account number that you then run like a credit card. You just run it through your credit card machine. You can run up to 20% of the amount of the project for a deposit right away, and the remainder comes on completion. Most of the financing company gives you 100% when the, when the job is complete. You have to float it the entire time, and you get paid at the end. This company, Green Sky, is going to give you 20% on the day that you run the first credit card for 20% down for a deposit. It's unbelievable. The turnaround time is fantastic. It's easy on uh, iPads and iPhones and all those kinds of things, and the rates are the same as or slightly better than you're going to get from other uh, lending sources. So from some of the big things like the, the rates and how much it costs, it's going to be very comparable to some of the other companies. But in terms of getting your money up front, making it easy to work with, getting quick approvals, making it easy as a tool for you to actually use, they blow the competition out of the water. So this is Green Sky. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this uh, – I'm going to put this – back on here again and then I'm going to do the following two things number one I'm going to launch a quick poll asking you to show if you've got any interest in either pay-per-click or in financing and then I'm going to open this up to questions so if you've got any questions right now please start typing them in to your um, uh, the console that you use for the webinar okay that's all we have for right now I'm going to launch this poll then I'm going to open it up for questions so please do, do me a favor at least uh, stick around for this poll it'll just take a second let me open this particular poll. Uh, please contact me about pay-per-click advertising, financing, other marketing services that you need, or maybe if you have a customer service uh, question, if you're one of our customers, go ahead and click that, and we'll, we'll reach out to you as well. So I'll give you just a second to do that. Meanwhile, if you'll uh, open the uh, question part of the console, if you have any questions there, I would be happy to answer those starting uh, basically right now. Let me get that over here where I can see the questions. Okay. Let me see how the poll's going. Make a quick note. All right. 
Right. That's what I like to see. We got a healthy percentage that want to know about this stuff. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll now. Um, closed. Okay. Here's a couple questions that have come in. First one says, "What about smaller companies that only make two to three hundred dollars profit per sale? These larger companies make thousands per sale. Does that mean pay-per-click won't work because uh, there's so little per sale?" The answer is that is very possible. But I see that that question is coming from Scott Newman, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're the refinishing guy, and there's money in there somewhere. If you're not the one making it, then you've got to figure out how to get that money over to you. And then I do understand your business model, uh, Scott, where you act as sort of a, a, a lead agent yourself for some of these refinishing companies. But yeah, that could be problematic. I'm not sure what to tell you about that. Uh, certainly would be happy to talk to you individually about your situation. Um, Google is offering to set up pay-per-click campaigns for me at no cost for a $3,000 monthly spend. Your thoughts? Uh, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do it in a million, billion, zillion years. And the reason is is that you don't know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. So they're going to set it up for you. It's not that they're being disingenuous or they're trying to rip you off. It's not that this is a poor offer. It's that you're going to get set up. You're going to spend $3,000, but you're not going to know what you're doing. and It's not going to work well for you. Uh, I just I, I wouldn't do it. I'm offering to guarantee your cost per lead for the same $3,000 monthly spend. I'm, I, I'm not quite sure why you wouldn't just do that in, instead. Um, but yeah, I mean, Google is in the business of making money and they're going to be actively and, uh, uh, aggressively trying to get people signed up for AdWords. But the problem is if you don't know how to use it and you don't know how to manage it, it's going to be a problem. Okay. Next, is there a benefit of telling Green Sky were referred by MYM? And the answer is, uh, yeah, there, there actually is, uh, and I apologize up front for not being more well-versed on that, but I do believe there's a preferential uh, rate that you get for that. I, I should have mentioned that earlier, but yeah, uh, just let us know, Dave. I see that uh, you've. Uh, uh, I, I see your name there, and obviously I know who you are. So we'll just we'll put those folks in touch with you. They'll reach out to you. By the way, David, I saw your uh, explainer video yesterday for the first time. I hadn't seen it for some reason until yesterday. It was awesome, man. It was really excited. Uh, it it was the most recent one that we've done. And it shows the evolution of where we started with explainers to where we're at now. And it's just light years ahead. The animations are fantastic. The coloring is, is really good. It, I was just really, really pleased with the, the work that we did on your behalf. So uh, anyway, yeah, if anybody wants to take a look at that, go to Google Valor Mold and go look at his explainer video. It's awesome. Anyway, uh, that's all the questions I have. Any other questions? I'll give you just a second. By the way, it's good to talk to you, Scott and Jason and David. Everybody else saw a lot of familiar names on the webinar today. It's great to talk to you. Uh, we'll be in touch, and uh, thanks for participating. See you later. Bye now.